It is said sometimes the greatest moments can happen by pure fate or pure determination. Both descriptions can likely be stated about Tom Dempsey, a man who helped keep the first 20 years of the New Orleans Saints history on a positive note during a period of non-winning seasons. He was born on January the 12th, 1947 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Unlike countless young men who played football, Dempsey was a bit different as he was born with half a right foot and half a right arm missing three digits. In typical Dempsey style, he refused to let his difference be a handicap in his life by jokingly stating in an interview, quote, 7 out of 10 isn't bad. He attended San Diguito High School in California, and here he is to tell how he first started kicking. We didn't have anybody that could kick off well. We had a pretty good little field goal kicker who took extra points and short field goals, but we were kicking off to the 20 and the 30. And the coach lined up the whole team, and he said, one of you idiots can kick the ball off. You know, that was, and they just went right down through the list, and I was about halfway down the line. I took my shoe off, I kicked it, went out of the end zone. I kicked, he said, do it again. I kicked it again, he went out of the end zone again. He said, you're kicking Saturday night. And that's the way. And the rest, as they say, is history. After playing two years of junior college football at Palomar in San Marcos, California, where he was also doing well in wrestling and in the shot put, he went into minor league football ranks with a team called the Lowell Massachusetts Giants of the Atlantic Coast Football League in 1967, where he kicked barefoot with a strip of tape across his right foot and once made a 57-yard field goal. In addition, he also played offensive tackle and linebacker. One advantage Dempsey had was the front of his toeless foot is flat and hard and he does not have to lock his ankle when he kicks. His foot is already locked because there is no instep. Also, he could hit the ball flush, but not always straight. He would move in 1968 to the San Diego Chargers of the American Football League, where he was placed on the taxi squad. Many might be surprised to know that he also was a professional wrestler during the offseason leading into the 1969 season in the San Diego area. Now leading into that season, Dempsey was let go during training camp over an issue with a special shoe the Chargers wanted him to wear, plus some possible concerns by Chargers management that he was a goof off. Dempsey admitted to breaking a few rules, but he was no troublemaker by far. Upon his release, Dempsey hopped into a vehicle and drove about three miles to Cal Western University, where the New Orleans Saints had their training camp. He received a tryout. From there, one-time Saints lineman Joe Wendrahoski picks up the story. One end zone was uh, facing the ocean, and Tom kept going, boom, hitting him, uh, Stumpy would hit that ball, boom, and knock the ball and go into the damn ocean. Well, after about five balls, the coach said, oh, you crazy, you dumb nuts. Get that, in, get them children and kick into the, uh, uh, on the other end, uh, that it was up into a hill. He said, you dummies, go there and let kids get the hill. We don't lose any more balls, you know. He kicked that sucker, boy, I tell you, little Stumpy could blast him. After Sportscaster Wayne Mack also stated that when the club's current kicker at the time, Charlie Durkee, witnessed Dempsey's kickoffs, he simply put his head down, realizing he may not have a job left. Head coach Tom Fears, in essence, was convinced that Dempsey was his man, 
when he made a 54-yard field goal against the Denver Broncos in the second preseason game of that year, 1969. Ironically, Dempsey wasn't even mentioned in the club's 1969 media guide. For the Saints that season, he would make a 55-yarder and a loss at the Rams, plus make four field goals in each game involving wins over the Giants and Eagles. He was also named the E-Squad kicker in the 1969 NFL Pro Bowl game. His field goal accuracy that season was just shy of 54%. And then came 1970. Here's Dempsey with the description of that year. The year started out very optimistic. Everyone was very optimistic about, you know, could we improve? Because in 69, we'd set a record for the most wins by an expansion team, mm -hmm. and everyone was real excited, and it just fell apart. In fighting, I'll do it again. Three, two. In fighting between head coach Tom Fears and general manager Vic Schwenk, eventually trickled down to the players, and the team struggled mightily that 1970 season. One day after the Saints lost to the Rams 30 to 17 on November 1st, hence falling to a record of one and six, Coach Fears was fired, despite owner John Meekum telling the press he was giving him a full vote of confidence for the rest of the season. On Tuesday, November 3rd, J.D. Roberts was brought in from outside the Saints organization, formerly the head coach of the Richmond Roadrunners of the ACFL, to become Saints interim head coach. Roberts had worked for the 1968 Saints squad as a linebacker's coach. Around the same time, fullback Ernie Realwright of the Saints retired due to injury as well as the club's turmoil. The Saints also fired offensive line coach Brad Eklund and replaced him with Jim Royer, who was on J.D. Roberts' staff in Richmond, Virginia. And then the big day, November 8, 1970, versus the Lions. With more detail on what happened, please watch this. It was an emotional experience, some that you would like to relive again. I know sometimes I'm laying there in bed thinking about about that particular moment, you know, that had to be one of the highlights of my life and how, how you would really like to live it over again. There are times in my life now when my day doesn't go well. Uh, when you're in the real world, which I am now and I have to sell every day, it's not just producing on Sundays, it's producing every day now to keep your job. And I haven't had a good day. Uh, I walk in the house and I look up there, I've still got the football. And I sit down and I say, well, one day I wasn't too bad. The 63-yard game winner was miraculous. But Tom Dempsey was not surprised. The biggest miracle of all was that he ever made it to the NFL. He was born with a deformed right hand and foot, as well as a burning desire to succeed. With the Saints, when we first got started, we had, obviously, uh, a zillion guys come. Everybody from the parking lot came in so they could kick. So one day, they said, oh, we got this other guy coming up to kick. And I saw Tom, and he's got the deformed ham and the deformed foot. Well, he started popping those dudes, too. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, they were just flying. I said, so that sucker can kick that ball farther than you ever seen anybody in your whole life. With Tom Dempsey's wrecking ball right foot, the Saints were never out of field goal range. The competitive fires that had led Tom Dempsey to the top burned brightly during those early years in New Orleans and lit the way to the remarkable events of November 8, 1970. The game started out with a fight and ended in disbelief. Jackie Burkett, number 55, who was to retire at season's end, sparked the hustling Saints defense with two interceptions. Tom Dempsey gave New Orleans an early lead with this field goal. But the strength of the Lions soon began to show. Mel Farr drilled through the middle to give the Lions a 7-6 halftime lead. And Charlie Sanders' catch boosted their advantage to 14-6 in the third quarter. But Tom Dempsey cranked through his third field goal, and Tom Barrington gave the Saints a 16-14 lead with time running out. But the Lions somehow found time to kick a field goal with just 11 seconds left. Incredibly, this game was far from over. Al Dodd took the kickoff up to the 28-yard line with eight seconds left. And 
Al Dodd was the split end for us. And I just got in the huddle and I said, Al, I want you to go down there at least 20 yards to make a good comeback, and I'll just get you the ball out there, and we'll try to get as many yards as we can. So I think Detroit really thought the game was over anyway, and they didn't rush me very hard. And Al made a real nice move, and he just laid out and made a great catch and got in position. I know what I was doing. I thought we had lost our mind. 63-yard field goal, I was walking down the sidelines towards the tunnel in old Tulane Stadium to go in the locker room. Locker room, basically, uh, I just thought I'd stop and watch him miss it and, and go on in with a win. We knew it was far, but we didn't know it was 63. I mean, nobody said, hey, this is a 63-yard field goal. Probably would have tightened up, you know, if somebody would have said that, but we just kind of did it out of reaction rather than uh, thinking. I was basically thinking about the same things that I did every time I kick. Keep your head down, kick through the ball, but yet kick this one a little bit harder than you normally do. I heard the ball hit his foot. His foot hit the ball. Uh, it was a sound unlocked I'd ever heard. First thing that struck me was that sound. The moment he hit the ball, I said, my God, he made it. You could just see that ball just fire off his foot. I don't really think it was larger than life. There's been a lot of other things in my life that I consider more important than the field goal. I think probably the most important thing to me is my family. My boy and my two little girls and my wife. Uh, I think the biggest thrill I have ever had is the day they were born. Like I said, I was young, strong, and stupid in those days. Yeah. And uh, I felt that I could kick a ball 60 yards, you know, anytime I wanted to if the wind wasn't against me. Uh, the only question is whether I could kick it straight or not. Tom Dempsey kicked it as straight as an arrow, 63 yards. But he had to travel a lot farther than that just to play in the NFL. He was born with a deformed right hand and foot. He was also born with a desire to play the game. It's something that I accepted very young. That, that, you know, nothing was going to change my hand and my foot. And you either brood about it or forget about it. It's amazing when you look at the thing, but there's nothing left of it. I know. It was, I told, we were talking about it before. It's a shame they tore down in this old stadium. You know, I, it was a beautiful place and a fun place to play. That was still a heck of a kick. It was all I had at the time. You know, I don't think there was anything left of my leg that day. Uh, I kicked it as hard as I could possibly kick it. Uh, you know, I remember the, one of the riders from Detroit came in and said it only cleared by a yard. And I said, well, how much did it have to clear by? <laughs> kicked the heck out of one ball, though. It sure did. Yeah. It was a great day. It was great to, to have one day done something good. Eight of the men who blocked for Tom Dempsey on the record field goal were linebacker Bill Cody and Wayne Coleman. Defensive linemen Willie Towns, Dave Rowe, and Dave Long. Offensive tackles Errol Linden and Mike Taylor, and guard Jay Cup. Two other men were responsible for that play's success. First off, here's a look at holder Joe Scarpatti. It was ironic that we did put the ball back a little deeper. That's probably the biggest change we made. And of course, he just uh, really got into it. It was like a cannon going off you know, when, when he kicked it. It was great. When you're sitting there and you're kneeling down and you're looking up, that's going to be a pretty awesome sight to think he's actually kicking at that ball. Well, you don't look up. See, in other words, my eyes are always focused on getting that ball down, getting the laces in the front. But, uh, you know, from back there, those goalposts look very, very small. <laughs> Whenever we go somewhere and it comes out that I played and then they, they bring up, you know, I bet you I got a question for you that you can't answer. And then they say, you know, who held the ball for the longer field goal? That probably will get broke someday. However, uh, he was such a special guy, Tom Dempsey, being a handicapped person. And, you know, to, to do that, to have that kind of achievement, I think was inspiration to a lot of people. He was, all the guys on the team really respected him. And uh, it was just great to see him accomplish something like that. Dempsey with a 63-yard field goal! Another man responsible for the play's success was snapper Jackie Burkett, who normally played linebacker. Here's an audio interview I did with him back in 2003 on that famous play. Uh, Alex Karras was lined up right in, right on my nose, and he didn't even rush. Right. <laughs> I got over the ball, and he said, what are you clowns doing now? <laughs> but, and then I guess uh, y'all all had the last laugh that day. Absolutely, absolutely. That was a, that was a real thrill. I, I never will forget uh, that, that moment. When I saw that ball go through the uprights, that was that was the most surprised and everything else that I, I had, because 
but I really didn't. I sort of felt a little bit like uh, Alex did, and that was that, that it was it was just a last ditch effort. It was like the guy that shoots a uh, a three pointer from mid court or something, you know, and you and he goes through. Wow. To win the ball game, but it it was great. Tom Dempsey did a great thing, and and uh, how in the world? And, and I will criticize the Saints for this. How in the world did they cut him the next year? And now here's another perspective on that Tom Dempsey field goal from Saints defensive tackle Mike Rangel, who watched the kick from the press box while on injured reserve and was spotting for CBS broadcaster Don Crickey. I'm sure the Lions were surprised when the Saints lined up for a field goal uh, and because uh, the pictures will show that they didn't even rush the quarterback mm -hmm. or rush the kick. And... So, uh, Jackie Burkett was a snapper back in those days, and uh, Joe Scarpati was, uh, was the holder. And uh, uh, Dempsey lined up for this 63-yard field goal. And when he kicked the ball, the ball got about halfway to the uh, goal post, and I couldn't help my enthusiasm, and I yelled, it was good. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was good because I'd seen Dempsey kicked, kick so often that w the ball was just rolling over very, very slowly. And whenever that happened, Dempsey hit it square. If you, if you hit it off center and you're a straight on kicker, the ball will spin real fast. Mm -hmm. But he, this ball was just barely turning over. And it was a calm day, and I just knew he hit it where, uh, right where he wanted to hit it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm a, I've got an engineering degree, and I, I judged the arc of the kick, and I saw the apex, uh, or the height of the kick, and its relationship from where he kicked it from to the goalpost. And I projected in my mind that that ball was going to go through the uh, uprights. And so enthusiastically I yelled it's good and sure enough the kick was good and and Cricky goes on to uh, uh, and the and the color guy go on and talk about the kick and this that and the other and the history of it and so forth and uh, and after uh, after all of the commotion died down a little bit uh, Cricky it may have been the only time my uh, my voice uh, was, my name was called on a national TV because I didn't have the most illustrious football career as we went back uh, earlier. But anyways, on national TV, uh, Don Crickey says that I called uh, called this uh, this kick before it went over the uh, uh, the, the the goalpost. And another interesting story about the field goal comes from WWL Radio. The station signal went out right before the kick and came back on about 30 seconds afterwards. Apparently bees got into the station's transmitter causing the temporary outage. So with that, here's the extended audio version of Al Wester's radio call of that famous play. And if you believe in miracles, my friends, it'll take something like that to help us now. Here is man to kick off. Dodd to the 20, to the 25, and out of bounds at the 28-yard line on the run back. Eight seconds remain on the clock. Kilma with the snap. Back in the pocket to throw. He looks. He throws. It is caught. And out of bounds at the 45-yard line. There is still two seconds remaining. Tom Dempsey will try to kick the longest field goal in National League history. They're sending him on with two seconds left. Scarpetti will hold. Dempsey will have to kick one 62 yards to win the ball game. Holy daylight, I've seen them all, but this is the most exciting moment in St. history. Scarpetti will hold at the St. 38-yard line, and Dempsey will try the longest kick he's ever attempted. Two seconds left. Here's the snap. The ball is down. Dempsey kicks. It's on the way. It is.
17. The Saints have beaten the Lions. Ladies and gentlemen, the final score, the New Orleans Saints 19, the Detroit Lions 17. And now for a perspective, as it aired on CBS television, here's the last four plays of the game with edited huddles, as called by Don Crickey. Arrow Man hits the field goal and the Lions take the lead 17 to 16. 11 seconds to play, Burrow double O and Dodd 25 back for the kickoff. It'll carry short. Dodd at the 14. Running to get out of bounds, he does so with eight seconds to play. So the Saints with eight seconds left and all their timeouts will have to try to get in field goal range. Three receivers go long for New Orleans. Here's a pass, it's complete. He's tying a 63-yard field goal. Not only will uh, if Tom Dempsey hits this one, he's got a very slight win at his back. He'll set a National Football League record in addition to winning the game. I don't believe this. It's good! I don't believe it! The field goal attempt was good from 63 yards! Incredible! Tulane Stadium has gone wild! A 63-yard field goal! We were able to find some additional footage stemming from the record kick. First, you'll see longtime WDSU TV reporter Wayne Mack talk about the play with a rear camera angle of the play from ground level. Following that will be a stadium interview with Tom Dempsey. Then right after that, a locker room interview with Dempsey and WWL Television's Jim Barry. A miracle of miracles caused Jackie Burkett to snap the ball to Joe Scarpatti, who put it in place where Tom Dempsey proceeded to boot it 63 yards to beat Detroit on the final play of the game. Yeah, what did, what did Scarpetti say to you? Nothing really. He just, uh, he said, back up a little bit farther. You know, he said, we're back and uh, just, just kick the hell out of it. And he did that. How did it feel? Well, I don't know yet, Jim, tell you the truth. I'm, I'm still kind of riding the cloud. I'd like to think about this one for a while. You didn't talk it over with the coach. There were two seconds left, and he just said, go in, huh? Well, he, um, Coach Heinrich said, the only chance we got is to kick it. And the co and coach said, go out and kick it. So you know, we went out and tried. Did you have confidence that you could hit that far? Well, I had confidence I could kick the ball 62 yards, but I was wondering through my mind is whether I could kick it straight 62 or 63 yards, whatever it was. You know, What were your thoughts while you were waiting? on that one. Just to kick it as hard as I could. Just to kick the heck out of it. Yeah, and just hope that it stayed straight. Three yards away! Other facts around the game included is still the longest winning field goal in NFL history kicked on the last play of a game. Before the game, safety Hugo Hollis went over to Tom Dempsey and actually told him, quote, who knows, you might break an NFL record today. The Saints' only touchdown in the game was a rush by running back Tom Barrington called Red Right 41. Going into the kick, story goes, offensive coordinator Don Heinrich told head coach J.D. Robert, let's kick. Roberts almost sent out the punt team when Heinrich replied, no, no, send in Stumpy, which is Tom Dempsey's nickname. Years later, receiver Danny Abramowitz admitted he was halfway to the locker room when the kick was attempted because he thought the team had lost their minds. Another long-lost story from the game has to do with Detroit's last drive of the contest on which they would eventually score a field goal to take the lead with 11 seconds left. Controversy developed on second down and 10 from Detroit's 25-yard line when quarterback Greg Landry threw what was eventually ruled an incomplete pass to receiver Earl McCullough. Problem was the referees never instructed the down marker operator to change it to third down. So on the next play, Landry missed running back Mel Farr on a pass. So now it's fourth down, though still marked third down by the officials. Now, fortunately for the Lions, Landry did hit McCullough for a first down on that play, 
just past their own 35-yard line. If the Lions would not have converted, then they would have gotten an extra play because of the official's mistake. Within days of Dempsey's record field goal, Dallas Cowboys general manager Tex Schramm filed a petition with the NFL front office stating the record should be stricken for Dempsey has an unfair advantage over other kickers due to his foot design. Much animosity was generated in the New Orleans area toward Schramm's request, including Dempsey stating, quote, if I would have missed a kick, then would my foot have been a disadvantage, close quote. About two weeks later, Schramm repealed his request. At season's end, Dempsey received the trophy from owner John Meekham for that record field goal, and in attendance was Tom Dempsey's parents, as well as Burt Rechichar, whose record Tom Dempsey broke. Dempsey would also be awarded the Philadelphia Sports Writers Most Courageous Athlete Award, Pro Football Writers Most Courageous Player Award, the New Orleans American Legion MVP, and the Saints and Sinners Grid Club MVP. Dempsey wound up getting cut at the end of the 1971 preseason by J.D. Roberts. Ironically, Dempsey was on the cover of the team's 71 media guide. Dempsey would get picked up by the Philadelphia Eagles shortly afterwards. He would continue in the NFL through 1979 before retiring. In 1998, Tom Dempsey's record field goal was tied by Jason Elam of the Denver Broncos. With a piece on that, here's Harry McCullough. Tom Dempsey is the NFL's record holder for the longest field goal, but now he has company. Today in the rarefied air of Mile High Stadium, Denver's Jason Elam tied Dempsey's mark of 63 yards, a record that has lasted 27 years and 50 weeks. Seconds left. Here's a the New Orleans the Saints down. don't have Dempsey a playoff win, but we always had Tom Dempsey's kick. One of the greatest moments in NFL history, but in a year when Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa chased down Roger Maris, it was bound to happen. Denver's Jason Elam tied the mark right before the half against the Jaguars. Tom Dempsey watched it happen from his home in Metairie, and believe it or not, he's happy. I think so. It may be kind of strange. Uh, I've held it for 27 years, uh, and he had a, just a tremendous effort today, and, and he tied me. You know, he didn't kick me out of the record books. I just moved over. And maybe, you know, the record will last with most of us for another 27. Elam's kick would have been a 58-yarder, but a delay of the game penalty pushed the ball back and pushed Elam into legendary territory. I about swung right out of my cleats trying to hit it hard, so, uh, you know, just big thanks to the big man upstairs, and, uh, man, I'm just as happy as I can be. Dempsey says he'll place no asterisk next to Elam's mile-high kick. He says Elam earned it, and he didn't do it in a dome. Football was meant to be played in the mud, the blood, and the beer, you know, outdoors. And he kicked it outdoors off of grass, which is tougher. And he really busted the ball. I mean, he, he didn't make it by just a little bit. He made it by a, a good margin. So I'm very proud of him. And now here's a clip of Tom Dempsey leading into the Saints' February 2010 Super Bowl appearance with Paul Murphy. Tom Dempsey's trophy room, no doubt one of the patron saints of the Saints, known most famously for a 63-yard field goal, which still stands today as an NFL record. Tom, why don't you take a look at some of your most prized possessions here in your trophy room. Well, we're very lucky the things I really cared about didn't get hurt. Uh, that one right there is the Times Picune. Uh, that's, that's their copy of the 63-yard field goal. They put it on, that backed it up on wood for me, and, and that's one of my favorites. And what about one of your shoes that you used to kick with? Well, this talk is, about the interesting design here. This is uh, one of the shoes. In fact, I don't even know which team I was playing for when we used this particular shoe. The, the one for the field goal is in the Saints Hall of Fame. I gave that to them. Uh, this was designed to look more like my foot. This was Sid Gilman's design. He's the, he's the coach that came up with the idea of the design when I was with the Chargers. Uh, so I owe him a lot. But this is the last one I have. All the others I've given given to different charities around the country. Uh, if and I you, get, of course, were born without toes. So you yeah. had a specially made shoe right. for kicking. Yeah, it was made to fit my foot exactly and real tight. And they said, I used to have steel in this, but it's not true. You can feel it. It's just leather because I wanted things light. I didn't want them heavy. And, of course, today in the NFL, you wouldn't be able to use this shoe, would you? Well, if I was young enough to play now, which I'm not, and they kept me out of the league because of this shoe, I'd be a very rich man. I'd have lawyers beating on my door to get at the NFL, especially now after that who dat stuff. Talk about the Tom Dempsey rule. <laughs> 
I guess they called it after me. I never paid attention. Uh, back then, I was able to kick a lot of long field goals, and so they wanted to make it, I guess, so that I wouldn't kick them. We'd come back to the spot you missed. Didn't stop. You know, I still kept kicking longer field goals. And the only problem that probably hurt was my good friend, Morton Anderson. <laughs> now, you mentioned that you, like so many people here in the New Orleans area, lost your home during Hurricane Katrina, still recovering from the storm. What does it mean to you as a Katrina survivor and, and one of the original New Orleans Saints uh, to have your team in the Super Bowl? It means a lot because this is a very special team. Uh, the guys on this team, uh, there's no quit in them. They got big hearts. You know, they remind me of the people fighting back from Katrina. The people, you know, I wasn't as lucky as I was to be able to afford a house to, get, to move into. But the way they fought is the way this team plays football. They're part of this community. Did you ever think there'd come a day when your team would be in the Super Bowl? I hoped. I, I hoped, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge Sean Payton fan. I think he's a great football coach. I think this coaching staff as a whole did the best job of coaching that I've ever seen in football with all the injuries and they keep winning, they keep playing. But the Saints remind me of these people fighting back in Plaquemines Parish, St. Bernard, how they just kept fighting. That's the way the Saints play football nowadays. Can you talk about the Saints fan and the Houdat Nation that that still recognize you and come up to you today and, and thank you for the, the memories of, of your, your field goal and your service to the team? It, it's nice. The older you get, the nicer it is to be remembered. But the, the Saints fans, the Houdat Nations, have always loved the Saints. Even the good, the bad, and the ugly, they've always backed us, you know, because in the years I played here, sometimes we weren't very good, you know. And they always loved us and, and always came to the games, always cheered. You know, I remember the first time I ever played a game in Tulane Stadium. It was a preseason game, and there was 80-some thousand people. And they started stomping on the bleachers, and I said, what's going on here? You know, this was all new to me. And then you, you just know how much these fans love this team. He's trying a 63-yard field goal. I don't believe this. It's good! I don't believe it! In terms of the kick, what was going through your mind as, as you were lining up the kick, and what were you thinking about as, as you approached the ball? Well, I knew we were going to go for a field goal. Don Heinrich was our offensive coordinator, and he sent, got on the phones and called down and says, tell Stumpy we're going to kick a long field goal, because that's what he used to call me. I don't think anybody planned it to be a 63-yard field goal. I think we wanted it to be closer than that. But I, as I left the bench, I knew we were going to do it. I started doing the things I normally do, step straight, kick it, keep your head down stupid, you know, the things I told myself on every kick. And I had a great great snapper in Jackie Burkett and, and coach Joe Scarpatti was a great holder and he's the one that actually picked the spot for me because I never bothered picking my own spots because I was worried about other things and uh, I didn't know it was 63 yards I had no idea I knew it was a long way because I was on my own 37 you know but I just went through same mechanics that I always go through and like I got a great perfect snap from Jackie and got a great hold and I got protection you know from the guys up front because you don't ever do anything alone it's a team sport do you still think about that a lot? Not really. I'm very proud uh, of what I was able to accomplish uh, and, and the men that helped me get where I got. I always remember them. Finally, as, as we head into Super Bowl Sunday, the, the game will certainly be a, an interesting game for Saints fans on, on, on many different levels, but do you have any predictions on how the game's going to go, score otherwise? Well, I, I think there's going to be some scoring. I mean, we're, this is what a Super Bowl. The two best quarterbacks in the league are playing each other. Isn't that phenomenal? But I'm still pulling for our quarterback, Drew Brees. Even though I like Archie and Peyton, and they're great guys, I'm pulling for the Saint. I'm a Saint deep in my heart. Uh, it's going to be great, and I think a lot of things are going our way. Uh, I think we have the advantage now with Vinatieri hurt that we got, we got the kick and advantage with Hartley. Does an outstanding job. And I know if it comes down to him, he'll drill it. What's the score at the end of the game? I don't care if it's one point. I just want <laughs> to win. You know, the people have been waiting 40 some odd years for this. And I said, we're going down to the old absent house in the quarter to watch the game. And I want to walk outside onto the balcony after we win. And I want to watch the Houdat Nation go nuts. All right, Saints legend Tom Dempsey, thanks for joining us. Now back to you guys.
Later on in 2010, WDSU set up a joint interview with Tom Dempsey and the 2009 NFC Championship hero kicker, Garrett Hartley, about each other's memorable moment. So let's go to that right now. Two guys in the same spot. You all have met. You have a relationship. Let's start with Mr. Dempsey. What do you think of Garrett? I have great respect for his abilities to kick field goals, and I really think the best is yet to come for him. What do you think of Mr. Dempsey? Obviously one of these guys that is a legendary kicker. Everybody's seen that old video of that 63-yarder in Tulane Stadium. Yeah, I think it was like on the 9mm roll film. <laughs> and, uh, no, it was uh, just you know, going back with just the history of the NFL in general and what he did uh, is just bringing the spotlight upon kickers and uh, the type of, I guess, importance that um, they are to teams. And uh, I mean, 63 yards. And that was back in 1967? 1970. 1970, okay. Yeah. 1970, and here we are, 2010, and that record still holds, and that's such an amazing feat that he accomplished, and it's just uh, one of many that I can just look up to. Tom Dempsey told me that he's going to be always regarded as the greatest kicker below sea level because Jason Elam tied the record. In, in Denver, do you think, I know this is kind of a silly question, do you think he could ever kick a 63-yarder? We saw you kick a 60-yarder in practice once. <laughs> you know, uh, that's really um, a couple times maybe messing around. Uh, we've gotten back far, you know, further than that. But uh, just uh, the opportunity to be able to hit that in a game, uh, I'm sure it's going to be few and far between. Um, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll have to see him wait. You told me last year that you were more excited about this Saints season than any before, and you loved watching the games and what they were doing. How excited were you, not only when he kicked the kick in the NFC Championship game, but also to, to see the Super Bowl and see him play such a large part in those games? Well, I got so mad listening to those very smart broadcasters about no one can kick a 40-yard, three 40-yard kill goals. I said, he can. I had a... Had a Budweiser bottle in my hand. I about threw it through the window. They got me so mad. So you were happy, obviously, when he made those kicks. I mean, did you almost feel like in some way he was kicking for you or he was kicking for Morton or what he was doing? Well, I know Morton has a lot of respect for him, too. We, talk, we talk, talked about that. And I said, as good as he is now, I think there's better to come in the future. He kicks well under pressure. He really does. How do you feel when you talk to you know, Saints legends and guys that are part of the history of this organization and, and they have such you know, great things to say about you and praise? I mean, does it, how does it make you feel? You know, it's just, uh, I guess it's very humbling knowing that I have the respect from guys that have accomplished so much in their careers and uh, just being out here and um, being with the team this year, just going out there striving to improve every day, knowing that uh, the importance of putting up points for your team or getting field position on a kickoff or whatever the situation might be. Is Garrett Hartley your friend, is it fair to say? I, I like him a lot, and he's a saint, and I kind of like saints. You know, uh, he's, he's a fine young man. The uh, thing that really impressed me about him is when he missed the field goal against Tampa, a lot of the modern-day kickers blame other people, not him. He said, I didn't do it right, I'll be better, and he did. He went and got three 40-plus in the Super Bowl. I'll never forget exactly what you told me after I missed that kick. I mean, um, and maybe you can refresh this. <laughs> well, he, he has a very strong leg, and he kicks the ball extremely well, and he overkicked the ball did on that game. So I told him where I was going to put my foot if he overkicked it again. <laughs> <laughs> Simply put, I guess that's exactly what was said. Very nice. Mr. Dempsey, Garrett Hartley, thank you very much for your time. Hope Obviously, the value of one person's life isn't just based on one moment. It's based on doing the right thing every day of your life. Tom Dempsey is an example of not just resting on one great moment, but rather building upon it into success in other avenues. The pursuit of success continues every day of our lives, and if we all take that direction, then all of us will be better off in the long run. The Lions 17, the Saints 16. 11 seconds to play, Burrow, double O, and Dodd, 25, back for the kickoff. It'll carry short. Dodd at the 14. Running to get out of bounds, he does so with 8 seconds to play. So the Saints, with 8 seconds left in all their timeouts, which are a little important now, really, other than they just need one, will have to try to get in field goal range. Dempsey has hit from, I believe, 55 yards away in a regular season game. 55 yards against the Rams last season. But Detroit will be in a prevent defense. They have five defensive backs in the game now.
Christensen way back along with Weger. Eight seconds on the clock. Three receivers go along for New Orleans. Here's a pass. It's complete. It's now drilled incomplete. Al Dodd was out of bounds when he caught the ball. Now let's see. Are they going to rule it complete? It's complete. We'll see the officials rule complete and incomplete. Let's see what happens now. Al Dodd. Now watch the official come into the play. Well, uh, if Tom Dempsey hits this one, he's got a very slight win at his back. He'll set a National Football League record in addition to winning the game. He's tying a 63-yard field goal. I don't believe this. Oh, it's good! I don't believe it! The field goal attempt was good from 63 yards away! We close tonight with a long lost record produced in tribute to this record 63 yard field goal and it was entitled The Mighty Buddha Dempsey. It was recorded in Monroe, Louisiana and was sung by a gentleman named Bobby Bridger. It's a fitting tribute to a great Saints moment. Thank you for joining us on this special anniversary tribute to Tom Dempsey's record 63 yard field goal. I'm William Taylor and we've said it before. Until next time, take care. In 1970, on the 8th day of November, there'll be a day in Louisiana, New Orleans will remember. Two football teams were on the field, the Northern Boys, the Lions, and New Orleans, the local Saints, four years young and trying. Pro football has its highlights, and each team has their day. The game was nip and tuck, till the Lions kicked away. The Saints had lost their lead, and New Orleans was behind. They had to make their play, but they were running out of time. It came the mighty boot of Dempsey, to make the football fly. It's the mighty boot of Dempsey, two seconds do or die. Close to impossible, I heard some fans say, the boy can never do it, two seconds left to play. Man and muscle settled down for the challenge to begin, a silence fell across the crowd, they needed this to win. The ball was snapped in bullet form, as still fingers hold, and hot leather streaked airborne towards the distant goal. With half a boot, he let it fly, soaring through the goal. They said it was his boot, but it was all his heart and soul. It was the mighty boot of Dempsey to make the football fly. It's the mighty boot of Dempsey, two seconds do or die. Going, going, gone, 61 yards, two and three. The longest field goal to date for football history. And now there's word going round. Will the record stand? But the boot is not on trial. It's the entire heart of man. It took the mighty boot of Dempsey to make the football fly. It's the mighty boot of Dempsey. Seconds do or die. Oh, the mighty boot of Dempsey to make the football fly. It's the mighty boot of Dempsey. Two seconds do or die. Oh, the mighty boot of Dempsey to make the football fly. It's the mighty boot of Dempsey. Two seconds do or die. Oh, and the Saints. <laughs>